Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, I will show you how to install, configure, test and troubleshoot the Squid proxy server. Squid is a free, open source and powerful HTTP proxy. Even if you will not be using Squid for your production environment, understanding Squid will give you good background for proxy servers in general. A proxy server stands between clients and servers and routes the traffic between them. Probably the prime reason to use a proxy server is caching. If one of the clients downloads data, it may be cached on the proxy server, and when another client needs this data, instead of downloading it from the internet, it downloads it from the proxy and saves lots of bandwidth. Proxy servers are also useful for malware scanning, access control and more. This is what we will cover in this tutorial. Set up the lab, install and configure Squid HTTP proxy, test the Squid proxy, configure Squid HTTPS proxy. For this tutorial, I will be using an Ubuntu server as a simple router. Another Ubuntu server will be used as the Squid server. Another Ubuntu server and Windows 10 machine will be used for testing. Without going too much into details, a Linux machine can be easily configured as a simple router with only three commands. The Ubuntu machine has two interfaces. One is connected to the internet, and one is connected to the internal LAN. We will enable IP forward to allow traffic to flow between the interfaces. We will enable NAT on the internal network. And finally, we will allow traffic from the internal interface to the external interface. Let's test the router. The Windows machine is connected to the Ubuntu router and its default gateway is the internal IP of the Ubuntu router. Let's try to ping a host on the internet. The router is working. Now let's install Squid. To configure Squid HTTPS proxy, we will have to build Squid with OpenSSL support. To do that, we will have to add an external repository. Now we are ready to install Squid Proxy on our server. After we installed Squid, we have to modify some configurations to make it work. The squid configuration file is etc squid squid.conf. This is a huge file with lots of options and explanations. These are the changes I will make to the file. I will define an ACL. ACLs are network objects you can allow or deny access from or to. In our case, we want to allow access from the LAN. Then I will define cache dir and increase cache storage and memory sizes.
let's test the configuration seems like there are no errors let's restart the service The service is running. With the squid installed and configured, it's time to configure clients and test the proxy server. Maybe the most obvious candidate to be HTTP proxy client is a web browser. Let's configure the proxy settings in Firefox. The proxy address is 192.168.2.3 The port is 3128, the default squid port And I want to also use this proxy for HTTPS Let's generate some traffic We can see in Wireshark that the traffic is routed to and from our proxy server, so it worked. We can also check the Squid server access log and follow the activities. Another candidate for HTTP proxy is Ubuntu APT package tool. We can see that APT contacts the repositories over the HTTP protocol. Let's configure APT to use our proxy. Let's repeat the process in the other server as well. To test the proxy server, I will download the T-Shark package to the proxy server. Before I do that, let's check the size of the squid cache directory. To install the package, the server will need to download about 20 megabytes. Let's check the cache size again. We see the cache size increased by about 20 megabytes. This is a good indication that our proxy server is functioning. I will capture packets on the router's external interface. And on the proxy server, I will capture the traffic between SRV01 and the proxy.
let's install T-Shark on SRV01. We can easily see lots of traffic between the proxy and SRV01 and almost no traffic over the router external interface. It means SRV01 is downloading T-Shark from the proxy server and not from the repository in the internet. This setup can save massive amounts of bandwidth. This is why proxy servers are so popular in mass installation and upgrade environments. HTTP proxies route HTTP traffic between clients and servers. The problem with HTTP proxies is that these days almost 100% of the web traffic is encrypted. HTTP proxy can't handle encrypted traffic. It can't cache or scan the data. It is not very useful in this case. To get over it, you will have to set up SSL bump. With a simple HTTP proxy, the client uses the original server certificate to encrypt the connection and the proxy routes the encrypted data between them. An HTTPS proxy will connect to the web server from one side, duplicate the certificate, sign it with its own certificate authority, and connect to the client from the other side. Because the proxy encrypts the data with its own certificate, it can control and handle it like an HTTP proxy. Setting SSL bump is not very complicated. We will have to create certificate authority to sign the duplicated certificates and to make changes to the configuration file. Let's create a new certificate authority. Let's convert the certificate to PEM format. And create DH parameters file. Let's change permissions. Create a directory for the certificate authority. And copy the files. Now let's edit the configuration file.
finally initialize the SSLDB directory. And restart the service. I copied the certificate we created to the Windows 10 client. Let's add it to Firefox. And try to browse to an HTTPS website. If we examine the certificate, we would see that it was signed by the certificate authority we created for the Squid server. It means the Squid server can now read and process the connection between the web server and the web browser. This was, I believe, a simple but comprehensive tutorial for the Squid proxy server. I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching.